Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to manage your tools using Robocop Action Server. Now, the reason why I am making this video is because I ran into this issue of managing multiple tools for building a specific agent. Now, typically when you're building an agent and you're trying to give it like as many tools as possible, then you have you're responsible for managing all of those tools, and that starts getting a little bit uh, difficult to kind of observe and monitor what's going on with each of these tools. And this is where your Robocop Action Server comes in, and that is simply because they provide this really nice UI. Uh, for you to kind of see what's going on with your actions, um, see how they're performing. So you could go look at the runs, see what's successful, what wasn't. You can also view logs of your um, actions. So for instance, I have this action here that is querying accounts from Salesforce and is able to tell me, you know, what was successful, you know, how the, the query was run, you know, what the results look like and all of that stuff. So really makes it very easy for you to manage your tools. And this starts to become a problem as your agent starts to scale, as you're adding more tools, as you're managing all of these tools. So this um, Robocop Action Server just really is a framework that makes it much, much easier for you to really be production ready uh, for tool deployment. So I'm gonna be showing you exactly how it works and also how you can set this up. I'm gonna put the link in the description. It's pretty easy to set up um, and this is sort of the, the, the sort of set of actions that you need to take. Um, we're just gonna walk through that. I'm gonna show you uh, my own code and how it works. So let's see an example of how this works. So let's go back to our actions in Robocop and I'm gonna show you basically how to set this up by the way. But um, essentially if I go into my uh, search uh, topics as an example, I can basically ask the question like, you know, who won the best uh, film at the BAFTA Awards uh, in 2024, in 2024. So when I run this, basically it's going to run this particular action and we're going to see the results right here. So we see the results, it's coming back. It has, you know, all the sort of, um, you know, search I'm using Tavili here. So that's why it's, you know, returning all of these results. So basically this is uh, running my action. I can also run other actions. I have my query account action here, which basically pulls information from my Salesforce account. It just goes and runs uh, a simple Salesforce query and returns all the account records inside my Salesforce instance. So these are some of the, the tools that I have been working with. I have one around query in cases and you can add as many tools as possible and you can see the number of runs for each ca uh, case. And like I said, you can also go in and look at, you know, how each one is performing. The other cool thing here is also they generate an open API spec for you, for your tools. And why this starts to become interesting is that if you were, for instance, trying to uh, build a custom GPT, for instance, you would uh, all, always sort of be thinking about, okay, how do I, um, you know, get all my tools so my custom GPTs can run them. And this makes it really easy for you to use this with your custom GPTs because all you really need to do is a copy all of this open API specification, drop it into your um, open AI uh, GPT action, and you can pretty much um, simply provide um, the, the URL that, that you get from um, from your action server uh, when it is running. So it's this is currently running, running locally on my environment on eight on port 8081. Um, however, sorry, on port 8080, I should say. However, if I use an expose flag uh, to run this particular action server, so let's try and use the expose flag, dash dash expose. What it's going to do in addition to creating a local um, server for me is it's also going to create um, a public URL, which I can use along with an an API key, which I can use. Now, now, what we want to look at is how this works with Langchain in this video. So in Langchain, we already have our Langchain application ready to go up here. And to use the Langchain app, you know, it exposes this URL called server, Robocop Action Server Invoke. 
And inside there, we can pass in um, a simple query. So let's try it out. We can pass in a query like, you know, who won the BAFTA awards in uh, for best film in 2024. And when we execute this, we're going to get a response back um, that is going to incorporate the response that is get gotten from the tools. So basically, as you can see, um, the search doesn't provide a clear winner for the best film for the, uh, the BAFTAs. You might want to check the official BAFTA sites. Okay, so it doesn't have that information. Let me try a different query so I can say who won the Super Bowl in 2024. Is it cute? And we can see that the results can come back this time. I believe the Kansas City Chiefs won. Maybe we can ask, you know, what is what is Open AI Sora as an example? So this was this is something topical and controversial <laughs> at the same time. Okay, so if we ask that question, then again, it should you know be able to go return that information because that should be. Um, online, so OpenAI Sora is an extraordinary AI model capable of transforming simple text into dynamic realistic videos, and this is coming back from there. So if we go back into our server, we would see that th these runs are being captured as well. So if I refresh this, you would notice the search topic here. We can take a look. Um, actually, we can take a look at the run itself, and we can go into the logs, and you can see the actual log here. So search topic, open AI Sora, and you can see the, the query, and you can see the response as well. So this was a response coming back um, from our search tool. So to set it up, basically you need to install Langchain CLI, and once you install Langchain CLI, all right, then you need to use the Langchain app new command to add a new application, and you're going to be using the package Robocop Action Server. And once you're done with that, you want to, uh, if you have an existing project, by the way, you wanna add it, you can just add, do Langchain app add Robocop Action Server. Basically, when you do that, what tends to happen is that, you know, Langchain will spin up um, you know, an entire environment for you to work with, and you would have this server as the entry point. Uh, one of the things you need to do is to to add this particular one from Robocop server import agent executor. And you also have to add the route that is powering your action um, server. So that's pretty much all you really need to do to set up the line chain side of it. Um, on the um, action si uh, server side as well, you need to create a new action server. And you just do that by installing the Robocop action server um, and you do action server new, which will create a completely new action server for you. It's gonna add a folder that looks like this. In my case, this is Robo Actions was the name of my server. It added that action for me. And this is what comes in that action. Now for managing your dependencies, you would see a conda.yaml file in there. And inside the conda.yaml file, you can define all of your libraries. So in my own case, I was working with Tavali. So I brought Tavali in. I also brought in simple Salesforce as well. And I have both my Tavali API key as well as my Salesforce credentials inside my .env environment and I also installed a python.env file which allows me to work with this. Now I'm going to share this whole um, you know package with you via github anyways so you can you know basically use that as well um, but Besides that, I have also added my function. So inside the action.py uh, file, that is where you get to add your tools or functions. In my case, I have basically imported all my credentials and loaded them up and also initialized uh, my Tavali client. So initialized Tavali uh, for search. I also created the Salesforce client by initializing the Salesforce client with my credentials. Now, in terms of actions, by default, it comes with this compare time zones action. That is the example that they provide. But I've also added a few examples of my own. Now, your tools must have this 
um, um, annotation for it to work. So this at action annotation is what converts it into um, a tool that can be used by either OpenAI, um, you know, for function calling or for LangChain uh, for tools. And basically, you provide, you write to your your function, you have to provide these doc strings. And these doc strings are very, very essential because those are the doc strings that the um, open um, line chain is going to use for creating your tool. So one is a description, basically here in this case for searching in Tavali, it searches for topics, you want to pass your argument. So a topic is an example, and then, you know, you're returning a, a list of strings. So with Tavali, it's pretty simple, Tavali.search and we provide a query, and then we're converting whatever result we get back into a JSON string, which is why we're using the JSON.dumps here, and then we return the JSON string and that and the response string. That's it. And for we're doing something similar for for Salesforce. We're querying Salesforce results um, and we're returning the results as well. And we're doing the same thing for querying um, Salesforce cases. So you can add as many tools as you want. And this is the beauty of it is that you can also expose this after you run it. So if you run your action server, so going back to the documentation here. You basically um, can run your action server by doing action server uh, start, and that will basically um, open up your action server. Now, let's go check it out in terms of LangChain and how it works in LangChain. Uh, because we're using LangServe, by the way, uh, you know, basically with LangChain, all you really do is LangChain serve, and that will start a LangChain server for you. So this is my like my current LangChain server, which is running on port 8081, I believe. And basically that is what we see here. Now, if we want to actually um, use something that I really love from LangServe, this is one of my co the coolest things about LangServe is that you can basically take um, this particular um, endpoint and you can run it directly as well. So all you need to do is, you know, your local host slash the endpoint slash playground and that will get you access to the LangServe playground, which gives you the opportunity to try it out. So I can ask my questions right here. So what is OpenAI Sora as an example? And if I start this, you can see the intermediate steps, which just shows you what's going on. So here, because we're doing a search, it's going and finding um, the search. It's topic open AI Sora. It's, you know, basically going to invoke that search and it's going to go provide a response back. So it's telling us that it's, uh, I'm unable to retrieve information about, uh, is a language language model developed by open AI. It's designed to, uh, understand generate human likes. Best. Okay. This is incorrect. So let's try it one more time and see what is going on here. So it seems like maybe our tool, uh, didn't work initially or something. Okay, so something is something is preventing our tool from working. So let's see what that is. So there is, oh, and the reason why it's not working is that we're using this exposed um, version of this. So, and I'm not providing an API key. So that's why it's not working. So let's use the normal version. Um, so action service starts, and this is just gonna open it up in a local host, which is what um, our line chain actually has access to. So now let's try it again. Let's run what is open AI Sora, and we should get the right response back this time around. So it's trying to run it. Yes, we got all the information and we should get our full response back now. So yes, it says OpenAI Sora is an AI model that can you know, generate realistic, you know, videos and stuff like that. So can create realistic and imaginative scenes from text instructions, in addition to be able to generate a video solely from text instructions. So basically it's, it's able to get that information back. And this is what I love so much um, about uh, LangServe. And with LangServe, it makes it very, very easy for you to also deploy to the cloud. You know, you can also deploy to LangSmith deployments, which is a managed service that LangChain has created, which allows you to host um, your applications on LangChain itself. I do have a video which I'll put in the description, which shows all of that. So let's run another query. So let's say, uh, show me all, all the accounts 
um, and let's see if it's able to get that. So this is basically supposed to trigger our um, Salesforce um, tool, which has access to our Salesforce. So here you see it's choosing the tool query accounts. So that's the cool thing about this. It's, it's able to now choose uh, which which of the tool to use. So you can use multiple tools, which is really, really cool. So query accounts, and then you can see that it's querying the accounts. It got all the accounts back. So when we go back to the output, we're going to see all the accounts that is generated. So um, total size 13, and then it talks about all the different um, accounts there. And I believe that it should be able to now, you know, return content that makes sense like this, uh, showing us all of the account. And also what this also allows you to do is to run cross tooling uh, type stuff. So for instance, I can say, uh, find all the accounts which start with a B and find their address. So what this is going to do is it's going to do a multi-tool calling here. So first, it's going to go and use OpenAI um, use my search query accounts to find all the accounts. And when it finds all the accounts, it's going to do the next thing it's going to do is that it's going to also then find it finds that okay, Burlington Textile Cup of America is the account that starts with B. And the next thing it needs to do after it finds that is to now use that to search um, for the you know the address. So here's the account with the uh, B. You may need access to the details. Okay, uh, I actually I should have provided a different way um, and search for their their address online. Okay, so this is a better prompt because that, that first one was, it might have felt like it needed to find the address from the return result. So here it returns, uh, again, the result, it says, okay, Burlington, um, yeah, it found Burlington. And then it says, now we need to use the search um, topics to find the actual address. Now I will search the addresses online. So then it's going to invoke the search and once it invokes the search, it's going to get the results back. And you're going to see in your output, you're going to say, um, you're going to see the final results. So I found some information. I found some information about Burlington Textile of America, and it seems to be diversified this. And then it talks about, you know, you know, the address as well. And, uh, you know, gives you that address, which is pretty awesome. So basically combining two tools, uh, to get you a result. And this is the cool thing about Robocop is like you can, you know, stack all these tools in there. And again, if you go back to your Robocop, uh, you can find um, all that is going on or what, what everything that is going on right there. So, you know, there was a query of accounts and then there was a search topic and you can see all the, you know, um, you can see the logs in there and, you know, manage them right from here. And you can host this application in your in the cloud and have you know really really clean way of managing everything that comes with your tooling now this is really really something that i think is going to be useful to you guys uh please let me know what you think again i'm going to put the github in uh, the description as well as links to the documentation. Uh, let me know what you are thinking about building. I'd love to hear more about that. If you like this type of content, if you wanna learn more about building agents and building um, really sophisticated LLM powered applications, um, then you know consider subscribing and giving us a like. We release content on a weekly basis related to building agents, assistants, building large language model powered applications and in general, generative AI type stuff. Um, also love to talk about building applications on Slack and tools of that nature. Um, so if you like that kind of content, then you know subscribe with us. Um, until next time, do have a great one. Cheers.